Welcome to the latest episode of the Edgar Rice Burroughs Mini Podcast. These short podcasts are meant to supplement the full-length episodes that I do along with Jess Terrell and Scott Stewart, in which we usually talk about one of Burroughs' novels in detail. Right now, we're using the mini podcast to do a chapter-by-chapter analysis of the 1912 novel Tarzan of the Apes. My name is Tim DeForest. I'm the author of several books on what I call pre-digital pop culture, things like pulp magazines and old-time radio, and I keep a blog about such subjects at comics, old-time radio, and other cool stuff. Now, today we're going to be talking about Chapter 17 of the novel, titled Burials. Please note that I will include spoilers both of this novel and occasionally of later novels in the series, and I also recommend that you reread this specific chapter before listening to the podcast, as I will be, I will be assuming that you're familiar with the events of it as I discuss them. Now, Burroughs never shied away from using coincidence to further his plots. With his fast pacing, plus his straightforward and often elegant prose, usually allowing him to get away with it. Here, we have quite a coincidence, as the Porter party learns that the skeletons in the cabin are those of Lord and Lady Greystoke, presumed to have drowned 20 years ago. Cecil is currently in line to inherit the Greystoke fortune, though that fortune would go to Tarzan, should Tarzan's identity ever be established. Now, the skeleton of the baby is, of course, that of an ape, but only Porter and Philander recognize it as such. They opt not to tell anyone else, using what I thought to be weak reasoning of let the dead bury the dead. But I was willing to concede that this uh, sort of thought was probably in keeping with the professor's ditzy personality. My wife actually disagreed and felt that Porter and Philander were showing some compassion in not upsetting a solemn moment uh, while burying the skeletons by introducing that fact. Now, Burroughs does an excellent job of continuing to show us the difference between the perspective of the Porter party and the Tarzan. For instance, the ape man is confused as to why they would bury the skeletons. I mentioned Burroughs' fast pacing a few moments ago. We see how skillful he is at that in this chapter. After the burial of the skeleton, Tarzan watches the pirates bury their treasure. These two incidents together could have, would have made a fairly dull chapter. But Burroughs livens it up by providing us with a mini-drama involving the arguments between the pirates and the murder of, uh, of Snipes. Everything that happens is perfectly in keeping with the character of the pirates, and it keeps the action moving along swiftly. Essentially, the latter half of this chapter is a mini-adventure within the larger adventure. We see again that Tarzan doesn't quite understand the motivation of civilized men, if we may stretch a point and refer to the pirates as civilized. He has no idea why the pirates bury the chest, and he recovers it and hides it elsewhere purely out of curiosity and an assumption that the pirates thought it was valuable. Um, So therefore, he might get some value out of it as well. Burroughs, by the way, had earlier inserted an important Chekhov's gun in Professor Porter's dialogue, letting us know that the treasure in that chest is needed to keep him from financial ruin. So in this expertly crafted chapter, Burroughs sets up a future plot twist involving the the treasure, gives us some needed exposition, and keeps the action moving swiftly. I also think Burroughs handles the incident at the end of the chapter quite nicely. First, I like his surprise, um, Tarzan's surprise, in seeing that the Porter Party has gotten the lanterns working, having found some leftover oil. Burroughs has long convinced us of Tarzan's high intelligence, but it helps humanize him that there are a lot of things he doesn't quite figure out from his reading. Finally, Tarzan's observance of Jane is nicely handled. If the prose had been less skillful, it would have been a bit creepy. But Burroughs manages to overlay a sense of innocence over the scene, letting us know that Tarzan is falling in love, not simply in lust, with Jane. So that's it for now. Once again, my name is Tim DeForest. Please visit my blog at Comics, Old Time Radio, and Other Cool Stuff. You can find a link to my Amazon.com author page there. Uh, Keep an ear out both for more episodes of the mini podcast and for the full length podcast. And uh, if you're enjoying what we're doing here, please take a moment to leave a review at iTunes. So thank you very much.